Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a sticker podcast. Yeah, when you look at the survival rate of people, how many days they can go without food, how many days go without water, we're starting to hit that crunch point this weekend mm. for how many days people can go without water uh, and food, depending on what they had in their home. And this is going to be an extensive search because it's so big. If you're going to do a doctrinal search, every home has to be approached. Uh, you knock on it first. Uh, there's nobody answer. You move on until everybody gets the knock. Then you go back and uh, based on uh, whether you heard somebody in there or not, you, you have to go in that home and see if there's any people, or animals, or remains in that home. Oh. And when you look at the size from Corpus Christi all the way now into Port Arthur and Beaumont, uh, this is enormous, Brooke. So I do think we're going to have to scale up because you cannot use volunteers for those type search. The mm. volunteers work for a search and rescue. You have to have certified uh, coroner oh. and medical people to handle remains. Oh. You, you can't use the uh, 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 volunteers for that. And federal troops, along with, if you're going to use them, and National Guard with police to make entry into private property. Oh. So the second phase of this, going into homes and doing a recon, is going to be a lot more complex. And I don't think they've scaled up enough to be able to do this in a timely manner because until you search everything, you can't let people back in. Oh, geez. You know who that was? That's Lieutenant General Honore from uh, uh, New Orleans, from the Katrina, uh, you know, uh, operation. I mean, this guy uh, has seen it all. I, what do we have, like 1,821 people killed in Katrina? I mean, he's seen everything. And he's talking about, we're just not, you know, we're not prepared. He also said in another part of an interview I saw, um, he also said that uh, if you didn't get your stuff in there before the storm, you're not getting it in now. You know, that it, it's a little late to uh, start talking about, oh, well, we're going to get water in there. We're going to get food in there. It's supposed to be in there ahead of the storm. You're supposed to have preparation. You know, people uh, game this out. He's over and over. It's just it's too late to do a lot of what uh, Abbott is saying uh, needs to be done. And he didn't scale up enough. He didn't, you know. But, oh, God, he's talking coroners. He's talking, you know, going to 6.5 million homes, knocking on doors to see remains. Uh, oh, and uh, good God. Yeah, when you look at the survival rate of people, how many? Oh, I can't. I can't listen to that again. Oh. Well, uh, the, the authorities hold on as long as they can under the uh, rubric of security. Uh, you can only go in if you live there. Then you can only go in after so many days after they've secured the power lines. But that power only lines. lasts for a few days and people start finding ways to get into their homes. And then we need to start having more and more public messaging to make sure people have signed up for FEMA. And then start looking at what, how many have signed up. And the next thing is to uh, make sure people are, are aware of the hazards. On, on uh, media and in the paper and classes here in these oh, look at uh, shelters to make sure when they go in their home they don't do anything that will cause themselves to be uh, made sick, such as handling mold, such as uh, not handling cleaning equipment right, such as going in your home and your gas is still on or the electricity is still on and there's water and you uh, get yourself uh, uh, accidentally uh, uh, engine or the operation of a generator. So we still got a lot of work to do in that area. Oh God! Now you know <clears throat> this is the biggest uh, petrochemical uh, uh, center in the United States, and this water is going to be uber disgustingly polluted. It's going to be full of chemicals, uh, not to mention the mold, and the, the you know mold is deadly. And the down power line, I mean, electricity and, and water do not mix. And I mean, this is a long ass haul. And so, you know, you have to look at who Texas put in in charge of them. You have you have to sit there and say, really, you know, uh, uh, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz is, is, is going to, you know, be able to do this.
Senator Cornyn, they're full of enough compassion and empathy and brains and and and, and wherewithal and 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 you know uh, these people uh, you know that they that they've picked uh, to represent them are good. Uh, but a lot of people are pointing out that you voted against aid for Sandy after that catastrophic catastrophic storm up in the Northeast. That package back in 2012. Uh, and they're they're pointing at you and saying you're asking for money now when you weren't willing to help the people in the Northeast. What do you have to say to them? Well, you know, look, they, 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 there's time for political sniping later. I think our focus really needs to be on this sniping, crisis Senator. and this disaster. These are people who needed money and who needed funding right after that storm. I covered those people. Many of them, uh -huh. just like those in Houston, lost absolutely everything they owned. Well, Katie, Katie, of course that's right, and, and the accurate thing to say is that I and a number of others enthusiastically and emphatically supported hurricane relief for Sandy. Hurricane relief and disaster relief that's a has lie. been a vital federal role for a long, long time, and it should continue. The problem with that particular bill is it became a $50 billion bill that was filled with unrelated pork. Two-thirds of that that's bill a lie. had nothing to do with Sandy. That's a lie. And, and what I said then and still believe now is, is that it's not right for politicians to exploit a disaster and people are hurting to pay for their own political wish list disaster relief needs to be focused on the victims of disaster relief he's standing in a shelter using the people who are living in a shelter as his backdrop for political purposes lying to katie Turr that he was enthusiastically for uh, the sandy relief bill he he voted against it okay what he voted for and this is how they do it they give themselves cover mick mulvaney who's now your budget director who wants to slash all of these uh, you know emergency and all of these uh, you know pro all of these parts of government that come to help you okay uh from noaa and the hurricane hunters all the way to the uh you know uh, uh the national weather service that you know gives the forecast to people who are preparing on the ground like uh, you know fema and the national guard he's also uh, proposing cuts to the coast guard okay all this stuff all right all this stuff is on uh, this man is just sitting, sitting there so mick mulvaney our budget director who's for all these cuts across the board he introduced back then he was in the house he introduced a bill uh that they could vote for that had like a tenth of the funding that was needed for hurricane sandy so that they could say oh we voted for hurricane sandy uh for a hurricane sandy bill a hurricane sandy bill not the bill not the one that was meaningful not the one that had the relief not the one that would uh, actually helped people uh you know no they, they voted for a bill the wrong bill a bill that disintegrated a bill that nobody else voted for but they do it so that they can say that they voted for something and then late at a later date hope that you're so stupid and that nobody will remember that they were against this bill and now they're lying about it senator cruz's uh you know accusation that two-thirds of the sandy bill was pork is absolutely ridiculous washington posted a fact check on it yesterday These are his that talking is consistent voice. with what i remember at the time there was a senate bill that had some of that and it all got stripped out because right. all of us including the people in new jersey objected to it um they were playing politics with it okay they were all getting ready to do what they wanted to do for 2016 um and make themselves seem like the most conservative person the fact of the matter is there's not a liberal conservative way to deal with people who are drowning and dying strong comment senator what are you looking for in harvey well look you know i i'm sorry that that there are politicians who, who seem really desperate to get their names in the news and 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 are saying whatever they need to do that he's a prick and now he's a lying prick um we have a crisis on the ground of people who are hurting right now people who are in harm's way whose lives and families are are in jeopardy as we speak and, and i'll tell you my focus and i wish the focus of others uh, would be on saving the lives that are being threatened. I have been spending much of the past week, I've been in Houston for the past week almost almost nonstop, uh, and I've been spending much of the past week trying to coordinate federal, state, and local search and rescue efforts, make sure we have the assets on the ground, make sure we have helicopters and boats and high-water trucks, make sure we're able to get the resources to the people who are in need, and, and I think that, that, that should bring us together. Now, when the storm passes, and, and it will it will pass entirely, hopefully in the next couple of days. Look at this. Uh, the communities will, will 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 begin to rebuild, and that's going to be a long process. 
Uh, and it's a process that's set out by statute. The, the FEMA statute sets out a formula for calculating how disaster relief works, the funds that are available, the loans that are available for people to rebuild their homes, to rebuild their businesses. That That is a long standard formula. And, and I think we can fully expect uh, that, that Congress will step up in a serious way to meet what is going to be an enormous need. The yeah, damage but you has didn't. been devastating. Uh, no one right now has calculated the magnitude of the damage because everyone is rightly focused on saving lives. There, there is a time in the process where you work on rebuilding, but the first priority has to be saving lives. And, and when we move forward, I think we will see Congress act united uh, to provide the relief to the citizens of Texans that they're entitled to under federal law, Right. I know we have the commitment of the president. We, the president unequivocally gave his strong commitment to doing so. And, uh, you know, for folks who, who are focused on, on raising uh, political shots and snipes about, about the Sandy Bill, uh, you know, facts matter. And a simple fact is that Sandy Bill was over $50 billion, and 70 percent of it was non-emergency. Only 30 percent of the funding was emergency funding. Yeah. For the victims of, of Sandy. Look at them just sit there and it's like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Emergency spending, emergency funding should be an emergency. It should all, re- they should have gone back to work, right? They don't go back to work till next week. The money should be there in the pipeline ready to be dispersed. You just heard General Honore. We're at crunch time now. People are going to die in the next few days because of lack of water and food. They didn't prepare, okay? They didn't know what they were doing. He didn't appropriate enough people or funds. He says he's been working five days. You know what? There were only 3,000 National Guardsmen for 6.5 million people whose homes have to be knocked on. I mean, this is ridiculous. Oh, and, uh, you know, Sandy, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, let's leave the... San- the Sandy bill took 66 days to pass because they were in charge of the of the House and the Senate, because Republicans were in charge of the House and the Senate, and because New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut weren't their type of place. They didn't vote the right way. Well, I got news for you. Neither did Houston. That's the scary part. I already saw them last night on Fox attacking the, go- uh, the mayor of Houston. It's his fault. You watch. It's his fault. Meanwhile, Abbott said, listen to your local officials. Uh, you know, don't ask me what to do. Don't ask me. I mean, if I were you, I'd leave. If I were you, I'd go up north. But listen to your local officials, you know, and blow. And so now they're saying, well, the mayor of Houston got it all wrong, and it's his fault. It's his fault. He doesn't command the budget of the state of Texas, nor does he command the federal budget, nor does he command the National Guard. The governor does. I mean, this is just insane. And these freaking Republicans, 66 days for an emergency spending bill. Katrina was six days six freaking days 66 days i i just i swear to god i'm i'm just i'm i'm so disgusted with this ted cruz and this senator cornyn and this governor abbott and the national flood insurance program i mean i i I, i'm telling you i know what's going to happen to these people when they file their claims this is going to be ugly fugly that's how ugly it's going to be jay in nevada Hey, Randy, thanks for taking my call. Yeah. I'm, also, I'm also reading here <clears throat> that Donald Trump is wanting to cut the Coast Guard by $1.3 billion. And the, the head of the Coast Guard is saying, no, 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 we got 25 uh, cutters that are over 50 years old that need replacing. Listen, I mean, his priorities are so are, are, are all about, you know, people like him, his priority. And, and this is what I'm trying to show you with Ted Cruz. His priorities are people who vote for him or people who talk like him or people who sound like him or people, you know, who live in. That's why the Northeast can go to hell when they get slammed. But Texas now, this is going to need, you know, he's talking. Oh, Sandy was 50 billion dollars. Wait till you see the price tag for this one. Yeah, exactly, and it and it is kind of amazing how you know with Sandy, you know, Ted Cruz was was saying no, no, and no, it, no. Why, why does this happen? It happens because they don't want to believe that these storms are going to get wetter and wetter and wetter. Right. They don't want to understand, and that they have the most lax building codes in Texas, and Houston is one giant floodplain, which you can now see. 
and that yep. they've been allowing all this building to go on. So now the building codes are going to go go away. See how Trump took away that uh, what, Obama's Obama? executive order that said if you're going to build in a floodplain, at least you got to build elevated. You got to put it at least two, three feet off the ground. You know, you're going to have to build up. Uh, and he said, Trump said, no, you can build anywhere, and we're going to pay for this. Okay. Yep. OK. And, and 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 by the way, uh, you know, uh, people are going to get stuck in the federal government and the federal government's going to you know, want to keep its money and it's not going to want to pay. And these people are going to be just roaming around the country with no place to go. Exactly. Thanks, Randy. It's just so sad. And of course, the Republicans in Congress have made this worse. I mean, Houston is full of runaway development in flood prone areas the federal government subsidizes these flood uh, areas subsidizes the building there by taking away the grass and the ground that absorbs all this water by taking away and putting asphalt or concrete or whatever over it. it's man-made flooding the go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast buy a stinking podcast